Tell me about um, the assessment of complications in esophagectomy. Well, I think that um, before I tell you about the assessment, I have to give you a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the issues that we have been dealing with regarding complex oncologic surgery is that from the surgical standpoint, we've recognized that historically we have had a problem not just with the survivorship in cancer patients, but with the morbidity and mortality associated with the operations we've used to deal with them. Sometimes that has uh, led to us very much um, um, putting other things aside in looking for technical opportunities to improve the outcome with respect to the mortality. And in fact, we've made great inroads. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that more and more we're centralizing the care of uh, major cancers. And in high volume centers, we can produce better results. Having done that, however, we now have a situation where we have identified that we can't compare our results because we don't use the same system to classify our outcomes, specifically our complications. And complications is a situation where everyone understands they're bad, but I think that the general public and much of our medical fraternity also don't understand the complications affect so many other outcomes. They affect with respect to things like quality of life. They affect the aspect of length of stay. They affect the aspect of cost of service delivery. And they also affect the ultimate aspects of what we're trying to do in the survivorship of the patients. So we set out five years ago to develop a group of international high volume surgeons that came together to say, we can do better. And we sought the, the support of the five major thoracic and upper gastrointestinal societies who all identified that this was an important effort. So having come together, we then through a series of meetings actually taking place at the ISDE and ESDE meetings and a series of Delphi surveys, we put together a platform of complications and quality measures and definitions that we then proposed to use when it came to esophageal resection as a framework to be able to speak the same language, to standardize the methodology under which we're reporting these complications, recognizing how important they are. We published this last year and we were very proud of that outcome and at that point we said, um, where do we go? How do we demonstrate that what we've done is going to be clinically important? Well, the first translation about this was the fact that centers and national databases and clinical trials worldwide started to gravitate toward the system and adopt it because they were, they'd been looking for something that would allow them to report their outcomes and complications in a, in a, in a standardized format so that they could be compared. But the second issue is we recognize that can we now start to collect data from multiple international institutions to get a feeling as to how robust the platform that we've created is and can we start to produce a benchmark that will be used as a comparison for trials in the future, outcomes in the future and to be used in quality improvement programs. Now that was the first thing we decided, but the second thing is the really potentially interesting thing from the standpoint of where we're going in research. Because historically what we've done in various institutions and in various countries, if we've stayed in our own institutions and silos and done the work we've done independently. So we have used our institutional databases, we've used our national databases, but we've never really come together in an international sense. And we also asked ourselves, if we're going to do this, what's the best methodology of putting our information together? Is it really important that we all have our own data sets and put our data into that and then we amalgamate it at a certain time frame and analyze our results? Why don't we do what the rest of the world is doing and enter our data real time on the web and have a scenario where we create a website which becomes the repository for our database. We make it secure. We make the aspect of our patient entry de-identified, which is of course acceptable when it comes to the aspect of making sure that patients can't be identified individually. And then from the standpoint of being able to work on the web, 
that information comes together instantaneously. So what we ultimately had is we had 22 international centers who all went in through their IRB and ethics review. They all got permission from their national and regional bodies to contribute to this database. And we opened the database, which is called isodata.org. We opened it in September, and the 22 centers that were part of the esophageal complications consensus group that produced the platform originally began to enter data. Now, we had an original target of hopefully, within a year, enrolling 1,500 patients. We actually, this week, exceeded 2,000 patients. So in a very short period of time, we're, we've done two things which were quite unusual. We had used the web effectively to um, be a modem of bringing our data together instantaneously. We've also uh, put together a data set now, which is different than virtually any other data set that has ever been put together because number one, it was accumulated in a short period of time. Number two, it reflects uh, contemporary practice as we're currently doing it internationally rather than just nationally. And number three, it set the stage for us specifically answering the question, can we produce a benchmark regarding complications, but can we change the way we're doing research and utilize the web um, to, to be our medium for collecting data. Now not only did we look at the complications, but we also looked at patient demographics. And we also looked at many quality measures that had never been able to be looked at before. And because we've been able to develop this data set in, in a very short period of time, we now have the opportunity to publish this, which will produce the benchmark, but also demonstrate that we can start thinking of a different way to do research. Now the other very exciting thing from the ISDE standpoint is the fact that we recognize, and the ISDE was one of our original sponsoring societies, and we recognize that even though we had been successful as an independent group of surgeons, it would be better if we worked with and had the oversight of a major professional society. And when it comes to esophageal cancer and esophagectomy, what better society than the International Society for Disease of the Esophagus? So having approached the executive committee and given them insight into this project, about six months ago it was decided that in addition to the esophageal complications consensus group, the ISDE would join with us to have joint oversight of the database and to form a committee called the Research and Database Committee, which will help develop research under the auspices of the ISDE and also work to, um, to further sub-analyze the database as it currently exists to answer very specific questions regarding esophageal resection. The fact that this has all come together in a year is, I think, remarkable. Because not only did we produce the platform, introduce the new methodology of collecting data, start data collection, accomplish our goal regarding the, the uh, database and the benchmark, but also in that same period, produce a very effective working relationship with the ISDE is, um, I think, a, a very important accomplishment. And now we have the opportunity to see this grow because we now have many centers who have identified that this is an important process. They have applied to become part of our group. And we have the opportunity not only to expand into other areas of research, but there is also discussions ongoing for the opportunities of how ESO data and the ISDE can become intimately involved in the evolution of the staging system for cancer, which is called the AJCC. Now this has been done by a group called the WEC, which has done really a spectacular job historically at collecting international data. But they're looking for other opportunities to amalgamate so that future iterations of the staging system can be done with very contemporary data and possibly with a new modality of uh, data collection. So we've accomplished a great deal over the last year, but the really exciting part is working with the ISDE is where we can go in the future.